What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist here at Stochastic on the Odd Chopper channel, coming to you with my two, yes, you heard me, two MLB plays that I've got going in prize picks today. We've only got six total games. There were three on an early slate. We've got two in the evening. There just isn't a ton on the board that I'm in love with, but you know what? We still can make some money here putting two plays together, and that is what we shall do here. Don't want to recommend three or five or anything that I don't believe in ever here on this show. That, that I will always promise you. I can also promise you hitting the like button, subscribe button, notification bell. If you enjoy this content, that's the best way to scratch our back. And then, you know, we'll help you out with stuff like, I don't know, promo code AWESOMEMO, which we still have going. First deposit bonus up to $100 over at Prize Picks when you sign up over there. Let's get to it, shall we? Because again, we have a lot of afternoon games. You can see on the board, stuff just locked here in the morning as I started recording this. Here we go, though. Uh, I'm looking and starting with two very contradictory things. And that's that's why I just kind of wanted to throw this out here and talk through the situation. But Carlos Rodon has a weird day ahead of him. We're going to start with him where strikeouts six and a half is too low of a number. I like the over of it. I like the over of six and a half for Carlos Rodon. We're looking at a, a, a Dodgers lineup. Nobody had to leave. I, I do like the Dodgers more in this game for sure. But six and a half is a low number. And I say that this is a weird situation because I don't know what to make of a blood blister and a split nail on his pitching finger. Those both sound like awful things that it's hard to imagine a lot of strikeouts existing, but we got that news before he pitched against the Brewers last time out. He still found seven strikeouts in that lineup in 99 pitches, five innings pitch, just one earned run, but gave up eight hits, gave up three walks. These are kind of like outlier type things for Carlos Rodon, and I don't really know what to make of it, but I know he's getting a bump because it's a Dodgers team that there aren't a ton of strikeouts that exist in this lineup. They're better against lefties. They're or, uh, better against righties. Excuse me. You get some lefties neutralized. I mean, you're not going to have Jake Lamb out there. Freddie Freeman, uh, he's good against everybody, so that doesn't really count, but uh, Cody Bellinger, very neutralized against lefties. You're probably going to get Trace Thompson in the lineup. Maybe Zach McKinstry. A lot of weird things. Hands are Alberto. I mean, good Lord. We're looking at a, a really watered down type spot when they face lefties compared to when they face right-handed pitching going forward where you get all the usual suspects. I mean, you neutralize Max Muncy from the left side as well. Just not a whole lot of resistance you're looking at from this Dodgers lineup. But Trace Thompson, 37.3% K percentage. That is definitely going to be a nice addition uh, coming in from the right side uh, for Carlos Rod Rodon to get maybe a, a freebie or two. So uh, six and a half is too low of number. Now, it's weird because the next plays I want to go to are almost directly counterintuitive. And that's why, you know, we're just going to talk through it. I like this. So we're going to take Carlos Rodon off the board. I'm putting Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman together. So these are two base ways to start your cards. You have to add something else to it. They don't allow you to play a pitcher and a hitter against each other, but this just comes down to a projection where six and a half and six and a half for Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts batting assumed one, two in this lineup. I just really think that those are undervalued plays as well. So you have to find something else that you like to pair it with. I think that there's a decent number of spots where you don't have to go crazy. You could do a flex play and maybe have them in combination. You could add, you know, Mookie Betts, the, the home run to, to him, and you could take off Freddie Freeman from the board. But this is just something where I, I see, you know, DraftKings scoring uh, being applicable for uh, for prize picks here. Uh, you do DraftKings scoring for the hitters. You do FanDuel scoring for the, the pitchers. But Mookie Betts is projected north of eight and a half fantasy points. Freddie Freeman right at seven and a half. And I don't know what to make of Rodon's injury. And one way that I can kind of get exposure to both is I, I think Rodon, there's a path to him giving up three, four earned runs, giving up over six and a half fantasy points in his five, six innings. You know, maybe they pull it off in the last three innings against Rogers and some of the, the you know, either the closers or whoever comes out of that pen for San Francisco. But it just feels like a spot where I want to kind of couple these two together. I'm not in love with the total home runs going up against Rodon. He's just still a really good pitcher. But with the unpredictability of his injury, I think getting exposure to that strikeout as well as to Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman, that seems to be nice. This Zach Logue number would have been really good earlier in the day. It was at four and a half, took a couple unders there. It's now at four, so less likely. But even if you find things that are 50-50 propositions and, you know, Sean Murphy, uh, Against Tariq Scooball, I mean, he's 
minus money majorly to get a run in an RBI. We'll see what that number looks like in the afternoon, but there should be other plays that you can connect it with. So that is kind of the path that I'm taking. I, I called it two. It's technically three because these are three plays I like. It's just a bummer because you can't play them together because you have Rodon there. But hey, those are my picks for today. You got to find something else to pair it with. I'm still looking for it. You guys should keep looking for it too because uh, I just really think that these are the three best plays as it stands on the board. Just unfortunately, we can't couple them together. So that's it. Carlos Rodon's over six and a half strikeouts at the same time that I like the over of six and a half for Freddie Freeman for Mookie Betts. So let me know what you think of my plays here. Uh, if you guys want to hit me up on Twitter, follow me at Eric Lindquist. I'm more than happy to answer who I'm going to be pairing with these plays uh, going into the late night hammer because I think that there's definitely going to be some value based on uh, what that lineup looks like in the Detroit Oakland game. Uh, I, I think that we can maybe find some strikeouts. I don't know about Garrett Hill being a guy to back, but Hey, I will find some other things to piece together. But as it stands right now, those are the three that I'm looking at. Also hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, and use promo code Osmo. I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets tonight.